to be guilty or otherwise. He will have been stripped of his chartered accountant title by Saika, as it happened today. The BBC welcomes this decision against one of its own. The use of the badge of honor as a carrot to lure them into the crawl must be used and then whip them to shape if they misbehave. There has to be consequences for delinquents. We need to consider ways and means to strengthen the instruments of accountability. There is in this country gross abuse of the bureaucratic process of fairness in our jurisprudence, innocent until proven otherwise. The Black Business Council um, supports this fight against corruption. We believe it is a noble fight. However, in closing, we want to caution very strongly against a very lazy temptation, I must say, to mention black economic empowerment and corruption in the same sentence. It is not inevitable. And such is very unhelpful. Just to cite examples, construction industry corruption around 2010 had nothing to do with black economic empowerment. Steinhoff corruption, which robbed the public employees and pensioners, a lot of money, had nothing to do with black economic empowerment. The Bosasa saga, which is unfolding, even though the name may sound very African, very black, had nothing to do with black economic empowerment. And I will argue, COVID-19 and the COVID preneurs, that's not black business. And if you look at the list of people who have been uh, served with papers, I think today by uh, SIU, uh, none of those organizations are familiar organizations from a black economic empowerment perspective. However, we are very strong in our condemning any acts of corruption. Uh, if our members of the Black Business Council are found wanting, we will act. And the fight against corruption is something that enjoined us, all of us, to take up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Sandile, and thank you for taking a very strong stand on accountability and stressing that corruption is corruption wherever corruption emanates from. And wherever it emanates from, it has to be fought, and it has to be fought swiftly. Uh, we're moving straight on now from business leaders to trade union leaders. Uh, and I'd like to ask now uh, Rifta Ajam from the Federated Unions of South Africa, FEDUSA, uh, to come up and uh, speak for the next few minutes about the role that labor and trade unions can play as part of this uh, campaign that we are discussing this, this evening. Thank you. Uh, Mark, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, good evening, first and foremostly, to the esteemed leadership of the Ahmed Kathrada Foundation, friends, comrades, anti-corruption years, all protocols observed. I greet you all with the universal greetings of peace. Um, it is indeed a great honour for FEDUSA to be afforded this opportunity to address a rally dedicated to one of the finest ethical stalwarts and leaders that our country has ever produced, the late comrade Ahmed Kathrada. May the Almighty grant him the highest place in paradise on the suspicious occasion of his birthday. As we all know, in his final days, Uncle Kathy, as he was fondly known by his comrades and friends, was deeply alarmed and disturbed at the unrecognizable beast that has become of his beloved African National Congress, the ANC of Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisuli, Walter Sisuli and Andrew Langeni, to name but just a few of the iconic founding fathers under an ashamedly patrimonial leadership. Like Uncle Kathy, we as Fedusa are equally alarmed 
disturbed and infuriated at what an organization will as at the same time unscrupulously allow <clears throat> the worst harm possible in the form of rampant corruption by the politically connected. I think each and every one of us here tonight should categorically say to the leadership of, of the South African society, not in my name, not in the name of my fellow South Africans, and not in the name of future generations of South Africa either. Past notable incidents of corruption, such as the arms deal, the Travelgate scandal of malfeasance, the Gupta family scandal, which included the interference in cabinet appointments and the high profile dismissal of former finance minister Pravin Gordon, noted here on this platform, and his deputy, Sabini Jonas, the collapse of VBS Mutual Bank, and so many more are telescoped and profiled. But the actual outcomes puts to shame the inability of our systems to act without fear or favor by applying the proper consequence management systems. And to all these scandals, the mind-numbing 13 months lethargy and the failure of the National Prosecuting Authority under the new leadership to prosecute all those high-profile individuals that have been implicated in the Zondo Commission. The new NPA leadership needs to act with lightning speed, shape up or ship out, as it cannot continue to be business as usual. All those in individuals implicated in the Zondo Commission need to be prosecuted urgently. Otherwise, what is the point of the exercise in the first place? Strengthening the corruption fighting capacity of existing institutions dealing with corruption remains critical. This would include improving, improving coordination and integration of anti-corruption work across government arms. And shamefully so, whistleblowers are instead vilified and the, and the behavior of corporate and public officials, what we call as modern day thieves, are justified and glorified due to their networks, tarnished credentials, sloganeering and populist rhetoric by keeping the masses chained to ignorance as a result of desperation and poverty. We have to strengthen current whistleblower legislation so that people with vital information can come forward without fear of victimization. Our members in the public service have been subjected to endangering their job security, their livelihoods and those of their families. Everything must be done to support NGOs such as Corruption Watch, as well as the Anti-Corruption Forum on the front of amplifying corruption. But what essentially be happens but what essentially happens beyond this identification process? Honorable guests, colleagues, friends, and fellow anti-corruption years, corruption is not just about stealing scarce state resources. Corruption kills. It is killing our frontline healthcare workers and our members who are getting sick and making the ultimate sacrifices amidst not being given the honor they deserve, as the money could have been used to award them decent salaries, but instead those monies have been lost to corruption. So, monies that were supposed to be allocated to PPEs have simply been looted and stolen. Stolen by the politic politically connected, whether individually or collectively. UIF monies intended to offload the immense financial burden from the shoulders of millions of desperate workers during the hard lockdown, stolen and rerouted due to incompetency and lack of systems and control, food parcels intended for the impoverished. How do we continue to justify these vile acts? It is simply no longer acceptable and must be condemned with the strongest contempt and punishment. Paying lip service should have been buried years ago, but those promises are yet to be fulfilled. These modern day thieves should not be fitted with Gucci and Versace couture that they sport, but they should blissfully be wearing the orange regalia they deserve. Nothing more, nothing less. 
again, we cannot overemphasize the importance of the MPA to move with speed and prosecute all those that have been implicated in the Zondo Commission and now of late the PPE scandals. Why is the process being delayed when the evidence have been, has been laid bare at the doors of the authority? We simply do not have the luxury of the time as South Africa's tarnished reputation continues to slip down the slopes of model decay. South Africa needs an independent structure, either private or civil society led, an ethics committee that plays an oversight role and cannot rule without fear or favor is simply just a toothless tiger. So the next logical and immediate step would be to see all those fingered in stealing the PPE resources now, donning orange overalls. We will not settle for anything less. So just as the nation was beginning to come to terms with the passing of Uncle Kathy's comrade, the late comrade Andrew Langeni in the past few weeks, an upright and ethical stalwart in his own right, the so-called leader of South African society in KwaZulu-Natal has slapped the face in the nation once again. Is this how we reward corruption? By rewarding and swearing in corruption accused former Etiquini mayor to the provincial legislature. So what kind of legislation is Zanedi Gumedi going to enact? The mind boggles. President Cyril Ramaphosa must act in his capacity as the leader of the ruling party and move with speed to overturn this reinstatement and save our country the shame and embarrassment that Thank has you, been caused by this episode. Left. Thank you. Although corruption now seems endemic, societal interests and active citizenry has pushed back these actions. We must act with absolute conviction and persistence in pursuing all kinds of civil society actions. So a few points to ponder on. Number one, as COVID-19 has been declared as a pandemic and a state of emergency was declared, so too corruption should be declared as a state of emergency. While President Ramaphosa aptly addressed the nation throughout this time and in his instances declared with immediate effect, so too should senior party leaders, officials and public servants who are corrupt be sacked with immediacy in the public domain in addresses to the nation. Restorative justice must be served. And yes, honorable comrades and colleagues, so too. DNA replication must stop now, failing which... I'm up, please, Rita. Sorry. We will be losing the plot. I thank you all. Thank you very much, uh, Rita Ajam from, from Fadusa, for speaking so strongly and for reminding us that corruption kills and for making a suggestion that because of that, corruption should be considered as an emergency and that it should be treated with the utmost... Uh, urgency, and I see that there's support for that idea on the chat line. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Zwelenzi Mavavi, the uh, General Secretary of the South African Federation of uh, Trade Unions. Uh, before I hand over to Zwelenzi Mavavi, I just have to ask my uh, panel to please try and keep the time. I know it's difficult, and I know the matter is, uh, makes us angry and want to speak, but uh, we have to do our best to keep the time. So. Uh, Comrade Zwelenzi Mavavi, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wanda, and long live to the undying spirit of Ahmed Katrada. Literally every day, new evidence emerges about the massive, shameless looting by the ruling class first and the ruling elites connected to both factions of the ANC. In their desperate attempts to show that the other side has all the thieves, they are exposing the loot stocked away in each other's greasy, filthy cupboards. Saftu has consistently pointed out that corruption is rife in all capitalist oriented political and economic systems. The capitalist system breeds corruption because it is based on the promotion 
of individualism as against collectivism. It is centered on the mentality of a dog eat dog, the law of the jungle, and me first to hell with everybody else. The system we live in is envisaged by the most prominent ideologue of the liberalism and capitalism system itself. Margaret Thatcher once declared, and I quote her, there is no such a thing as society, end of quote. Under the ANC rule of 26 years now, society as we know it, the slogan, an injury to one is an injury to all, Ubuntu, has all been destroyed in favor of the notion of the survival of the fittest. The phenomenon of the tender premiers and today's COVID premiers is the expression of the society envisaged by Margaret Thatcher. In that society, even the pandemic threatening to kill millions is seen as an opportunity to advance personal ambitions to ill-forgotten wealth. The PPE is such is in such a demand because it saves our health workers. And that is just one of the examples of how the people who are practicing this slogan of an injury to one is an opportunity to to me, is pursuing that uh, looting under these circumstances. This practice is not in any way confined to the public sector. The competition tribunal has been very busy, flooded by complaints that corporations are in the middle of this human tragedy, inflating prices beyond the reach of the working class. This is deliberate so that the possibility of you not dying of COVID-19 is directly linked to your ability to pay inflated prices. Serve to insist that the most significant corruption is taking place in the private sector. One example we keep on quoting is that between, according to the Financial Intelligence Center, between a staggering $10 billion to $25 billion dollars or a 178 to 445 billion rands is annually shifted out of the economy through illicit financial flows. Judge Davis, who conducted the tax commission, argues that at least 50 billion per year in conservative terms is estimated to be lost to the South Africa's economy through what they call the aggressive tax dodging schemes. Aside from the Competition Commission, the government is unwilling to call out the thieves. The only reason for the government to close its eyes to this biggest criminality is that every second business, uh, government leader is a business person or a business woman. Taking a hard stance against illicit cash outflows and other nefarious activities such as the tax dodging schemes will conflict most of our government leaders. Even President Ramaphosa was 
repeatedly implicated in illicit financial outflows through companies he influenced, such as Lon Min, MTN, and his own Shanduka, as the Panama Papers revealed. As another example, the 30 financial institutions caught manipulating the currency to the detriment of the economy are not yet held accountable, even though several paid massive fines in the United States for the destruction of the South Africa's bank. So too are companies which were in cahoots with the Guptas, including media, lawyers, international... Start to sum up, please, comrades on Zima. The society is just sick of the lack of accountability on the part of all of these people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zolan Zima Vavi, the General Secretary of SAFTU, and I apologize for having to interrupt you, but thank you for reminding us about the role of the private sector in corruption. It's not just a public sector issue. It's not just a political uh, issue. It is deeply embedded in business and in all aspects of our society. And again, we have to look and tackle it wherever it comes from. Uh, I'm now going to move on to the last speaker uh, on this panel, uh, Bonang Mahale, uh, speaking on behalf of Business uh, Leadership South Africa. And again, just a quick appeal, uh, uh, Comrade Bonang Mahale, uh, keep to time. And uh, we want to know what business is going to do and what the trade unions are going to do together uh, to take action, to take us onto the streets uh, to stop this problem and to stop corruption from killing people. So over to you. Bonang, and thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you. Mark, thank you very much for having me. For me, what really shocks me absolutely to the core, it is the brazenness and the shamefulness of it all. There are at least two acts that are explicit that if you are a government employee, it is illegal to do business with the state. The Minister of Public Service Administration, Honorable Senzo Mtunu, reiterated this in the notice to provinces and municipalities on the 30th of June that it is a contravention of Section 8 of the Provincial Administration Management Act to do business with the state when you are a public servant. The Financial Intelligence Center Act calls for extreme due diligence to be applied to politically exposed persons and their first degree relatives. What makes the current spate of corruption even more revolting is that upon the announcement of the 500 billion social and economic stimulus package, South Africans strongly warned government that most of this yet to be borrowed money is not might going to be stolen. Business has been quite firm that prevention of looting is much better than the cure. The Nelson Mandela Foundation has been advocating for developing a social contract by and with the people. Such a social contract must be mounted on the principles of integrity and ethical conduct. The Council for the Advancement of South African Constitution has for some time now called for the establishment of a dedicated, independent, anti-corruption entity with teeth. The Foundation for Human Rights has called for accountability and visible consequences for corrupt acts, for without that, we have unbridled impunity. In April already, the South African Council of Churches warned about this and called for specific COVID-19 corruption-busting measures. In May, the Ahmed Kathrada Foundation and several civil society organizations made practical recommendations to monitor how the 500 billion was going to be spent by government. These included transparency and the effective use of the online portal of the e-tender system and the involvement of trustworthy people outside of government to help monitor the use of funds and resources. The Two, two Legacy Foundation, at the passing of Rivonia trialist Isitwala Ndwe Siaparankwe and Rumlangen, highlighted that he continued to speak out against corruption for morality and fairness within his beloved ANC and in government. This 
in the wake of the closest working relationship amongst all the social partners as a shoulder force in the wake of the pandemic. The immediate consequence is that we are now in the midst of the lowest confidence, trust and hope since the second world war. Surely there is no... Turn your video on. Sorry. I'm trying to improve the connectivity from the Kruger, which is not strong. Okay, okay. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Surely there is no economy that can survive the at least eight catastrophes that have been meted out in quick su- succession in sh- such a short period of time. The nine wasted years of state capture, a technical recession, Moody's downgrade, COVID-19 found us prostate face, face down and finished. 12 years of ESCOM's rolling blackouts, 2018 VBS bank looting, intermittent water supply, and now this daylight Government's 9th of August clarification on the role of the ministerial team established by cabinet at its meeting of the 5th of August, I think is to be welcome. What we need now, more than anything else, is to restore confidence, extend trust, and give hope by all working together to, amongst others, urgently send some state capture miscreants to prison. We need to continue to protect whistleblowers and honest public servants to report corruption, name and shame the corrupt. The the Solidarity Fund must set an example of absolute transparency by publishing all the COVID-19 awarded contracts in order for government to go even much further. Government to also recoup all funds lost through irregular and corrupt COVID-19 contracts. Those who lead and represent us must be held to the highest possible ethical and moral standards grounded in principles and wholesome intent and not just the much lower prescript of the law. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, business uh, leadership uh, South Africa's Bonang Mahale, uh, the last speaker there at uh, the Ahmed Kathrada uh, uh, rally there against uh, COVID-19 corruption. We're running a bit over, so we're going to have to leave it there and hand over to Koli, who will have uh, your sports for you. Have a great evening.